on reddit the internet's auditory version of reddit i'm nelson allingham joined by michael cambo campbell <laughs> we're pretty familiar i would say you and i yeah but i've never seen you actually just podcast in a robe before yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is a I'm new level we've comfy. reached oh you I'm look very comfortable comfy yes I went to a thing last night and um it's a uh, meat and whiskey wasn't something. it no, not meat and whiskey. <laughs> it was uh, it was whiskey, wine, and fire. Whiskey, wine, the... and fire, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there was all three things there. Yeah, so they followed through on that. <laughs> oh, Cambo. Yes. Sorry, breaking news. Okay, I, th- oh. this has just come past, just off the desk. <laughs> wow, this it's is come rare. <laughs> past the desk and into my earpiece. Great. Very new news. I mm. would be surprised if anybody had heard of this yet. Mm. The president has been shot. Oh, yes, yes. Um, That's true. I don't think this has been reported on much. No. Certainly not on Reddit. We are top of the... People come to us first, usually, when something breaks. And I've just heard of it. Here's a prediction at the middle point of the year, Nelson. Yeah. We do our best of Reddit at the end of the year. Top post of the year. Oh. I'm, I'm I'm going to say early that I reckon it's Trump being shot. Yeah. You know, just in my little, uh, I, I I wasn't on Reddit last week when obviously uh, it, I've just been told is when <laughs> it actually happened. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I didn't. I, I mean, surely that there's one post that's going to be out there. But surprisingly, all my sources of this came from like legitimate news <laughs> places. Um, you know what? I actually did actually. Yeah, I saw it first on Reddit. And then I oh, had to. Right. I, then I verified it on a legitimate yeah, yeah. news source. I saw yeah, it. Normally, I get it first from Reddit. It was just surprising. It yeah. was just something along the lines of it looked like Trump was shot at or something like that. And you see the video where he grabs his ear and he ducks. Oh. And then yes. I was like, I'm going to check that out. Like so, yeah. I, I didn't <laughs> yeah. stay on site, but I do think I did first see it on our yeah. website of choice, Reddit.com. Um, you know what was interesting actually yeah. about this, right? Uh, I, I'm kind of glad perhaps that we, we didn't. We recorded the day, so like early. the day before it happened. Yeah. The day before <laughs> we're like, God damn it. Um, but because there's, you know, uh, interesting things that have come out afterwards and probably the most interesting thing, which is so not directly associated with it, but I find it the most interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether you heard of this. So the band Tenacious D, Jack Back and Carl yeah. Gass, yeah. they've been touring in Australia. Mm-hmm. And uh, at some point last week, they did a show yeah. and Kyle Gass was asked to make a wish, I think for his birthday. And his wish was to not miss Trump next time. Mm. And uh, I saw a little video. It didn't go for very long after he made that joke. People in the crowd laughed. Jack Black doesn't seem too perturbed by it, but, uh, you know, seemingly they go on. Then it comes out that Jack Black, he's tweeted, we're cancelling all of our Australian shows. No, no. Because all shows in the tour. Oh, oh shit. Sorry. I thought the tour was just. No, no, no. They were just in Australia at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So all shows. Yep. Because. I felt that what Carl said was really terrible. I don't condone any violence in this way. And uh, yeah, so we're not, you know, doing doing any more shows. Yeah. I thought that was so crazy and interesting because, but uh, there is sort of part of me that agrees with Jack Black, you know, we, we are not uh, mm. pro- big proponents of Trump on no, this show at no. all. Uh, but yeah, I, I get the idea yeah, that, I, you know, it's it, like assassination is not the answer. Yeah. And in fact, more than anything, if this proves anything, it should tell people that by attempting to assassinate someone and missing, 
you're far more likely to get them into office than anything else mm-hmm. in the world. Yeah. Trump would have paid a gazillion dollars for that to be staged. I'm yeah. not saying it was. It obviously wasn't. Yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah. just but saying, you're saying like, what, if he what could have tactic. invested in that exact scenario, yeah. he would have. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> it's just like, it's just given him certain like guaranteed victory. It seems Look, like. at, at the risk of being cancelled and threatened with deportation like Kyle Gass was when he made the joke, are you saying that perhaps when Trump was on the plane out of there, after everything happened, he went, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I pay my advisors so much money <laughs> to, you know, come up with ideas for my campaign. Yeah. All I needed was just some guy to try and assassinate me. Uh, oh, yeah. Nelson, sorry, breaking news. I'm just getting oh. breaking news in my ear. Oh my just God. come across my desk. Oh, that's uh, And this yeah, is okay. an alert that says that I, I often don't do this in time, so I'm being very good in remembering beforehand. Mm-hmm. It says here that the latest movie – a cancelled movie report season actually releases on Thursday. Uh, so that'll oh. be kicking off this Thursday. Um, I don't know where this report has come from. Oh. Um, I don't know whether it's verified. It might not be launching Thursday. I reckon check, though. Okay. Yeah, just check on Thursday because there might be a new episode of Cancelled Movie Report kicking right. off there. I'm, I'm not going to check and just assume that's right. I Yeah, look, the source seems <laughs> verified, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Yeah, but, like, I'm not going to – like, I'm just going to trust – that it's out there. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to listen to it. No, to no. confirm that it is. I'm just going <laughs> to assume that it is and move on. That's fine for you, Nelson. Um, yeah. But it's not fine for anyone else listening. Yeah, that's to fair this. enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Kempe. Uh, we should get into it. This Reddit on Reddit is by Gone Emotionally. No, it's cross posted to us by Gone Emotionally, obviously. <laughs> Uh, go on. I know for a fact, gone emotionally has no original thoughts. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm sorry, gone emotionally. I don't even know who that is of our community. Uh, uh, this is, uh, but it was posted by Lost Library Book, I think. Yes. Uh, and it was in the subreddit, uh, I think, best of Reddit posts something reposts right. i can't remember and you don't use that at the end of the year that subreddit yeah yeah, yeah because that's cheating <laughs> <laughs> uh the, uh so it is actually from i think another site anyway so i don't understand how it's called best of reddit when it's from a different site Shh, nelson enough of this maybe i just don't understand the uh i don't know what's happening in this place. Anyway, it's, they said it's from Ask a Manager, which and there's a link and there's another website called Ask a Manager. Anyway, this person has uh, written, I was rejected because I told my interviewer I never make mistakes. I was rejected from a role for not answering an interview question. I had all the skills they asked for and the recruiter and hiring manager loved me. I had a final round of interviews. A peer on the hiring team appear from another team that I would work closely with, the director of both teams, so would be grand boss, which I thought was weird. And then finally, a technical test with the hiring manager I had already spoken to. It's definitely not weird for your boss's boss to be in. No. I'm an interview. I'm just going to throw that out there just to start. Anyway, uh, this is in brackets. I don't know if it matters but I'm male and everyone I interviewed with was female. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. (laughs) Unless you're in like a women's lingerie store and they think for some reason that you might be a creep trying to look at women in lingerie. (laughs) It's the only time that I'm like, all right, a room full of women might be there to just to quickly judge if this man is on the level. That's the only circumstance I can think of. What's so weird is that I know a lot of um, female clothes companies i still run by men. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's uh, positive still, can be. You can't be a man and yeah, be wrong. That's, that's, saying, that's yeah, the world yeah, we live in. <laughs> yeah, if you're, work, if you're interviewing for a women's clothing lingerie line, there should yeah. be a group of other men going like, hey, yeah, he gets it, yeah. Yeah, he gets it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, the interviews went great. Great. Except Ooh. the grand boss. Oh, no. The grand, the grand boss. The it's grand, such a... it, I actually... It, it's annoying because if I had heard this term independently, I'd mm. love it. Yeah, now yeah. I'm yeah. hearing it from somebody who's... I, I think... Spoilers about to be clearly wrong. Obviously, uh, um, you know, I know my boss's boss. But I think now if I ever introduce them to people, I'm like, oh, this is my boss. And this here is my grand boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about like grand bossy? You know, like like my grandmama <laughs> yeah, or yeah, something, yeah, you know? Yeah, you yeah. need like... Uh, yeah, grandbo. I call them grand bow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, grand bow. Grand bow bow. Yeah, that's good. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the interviews went great except for the grand boss. I asked why she was interviewing me since it was a technical <laughs> position and she was clearly clearly some kind of middle manager. Mm. She told me she had a technical background, although she had been in management 10 years. So it's not like her experience was even relevant. Mm. <laughs> but that uh, she was interviewing for things like communication, ability to prioritize and soft skills. I thought it was weird to interview with my boss's boss, a.k.a. Mm. grand boss. Yeah. Grand Uh This is, oh God, I don't want to stop and start necessarily, but I'm just going to say the, partly what's crazy with this is this is somebody who must just be starting out. Actually, I think it goes into that later. They've like finished studying. It must be like one of their first jobs or something because the, they sort of feel as though, regardless of how technical a position is, that everyone senior to them has to have the same technical skill, hmm. which is just not true at all. Because eventually, you kind of need people to run things more so than have the technical skill. And it can certainly help uh, to have that technical skill, but you don't need to be on the same level, I think, as the people below you, the same knowledge level. That's That's kind of how hiring works yeah it's always you know you hire people for the role that's required yeah and in fact there's been probably lots of uh, cases i've witnessed where you've got somebody who's really technically proficient in something and then they get promoted because it seems like they would be the best person to manage that team but they have zero management skills and they totally screw it up. I I think we've talked about before the saying that you get promoted to the level of your incompetency. Mm, Yeah. right. Which is like, yeah, like you might be really technically gifted this. So they promote you, but that is the level of your competency and they've now promoted you out of your level of competency. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't go any higher and you're stuck. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Anyway, she asked pretty standard and boring questions, (laughs) which I aced. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I do I do love the confidence. Yeah, I kind of like this guy. <laughs> um, but then she asked me to tell her about the biggest mistake I've made in my career and how I handled it. I told her <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I told her I'm a professional and I don't make mistakes. And she argued with me. Hmm. She said, everyone makes mistakes, but what matters is how you handle them and prevent the same mistake from happening in the future. I told her maybe she made mistakes as a developer, but since I actually went to school for it, I didn't have that problem. (laughs) She seemed fine with it, and we moved on with the interview. Yeah. A couple of days later, the recruiter emailed me to say they had decided to go with someone else. I asked her for feedback on why I wasn't chosen, and she said there were other candidates who were stronger. I wrote back and asked if the grand Bobo had been the reason I didn't get the job. And she just told me again that the hiring panel made the decision to hire someone else. I looked the grand Bobo up on LinkedIn after the rejection and she was a developer at two industry leaders and then an executive at a third. She was also connected to a number of well-known sea level people in our city and industry. I'm thinking of mailing her on LinkedIn to explain why her question was wrong and asking her if she'll consider me for future positions at her company, but my wife says it's a bad idea. Mm. What do you think about me mailing her to try to explain? What I love is that initially this person's uh, assessment, he's been like, this idiot doesn't know jack shit. They're just middle management. I know more than them. But then he's looked them up on LinkedIn and they have... 
she was a developer at two industry leaders. Yeah. Which seems important. Well, and then an executive at a third, which is very important, which kind of shows that she's she way better than you. Yeah. <laughs> the, this whole post is reframed entirely. Like, no matter what, it's insane to to be like, yeah, you don't understand the social of what they're doing. Yeah, you know, like the idea that you cannot admit to mistake, and and you were challenging why the person is in the interview in the first place. But this whole thing, I think, is recontextualized by the bit at the start being like, I don't know if this is important, but they were all women. Yeah, <laughs> which makes me think that the only reason that they felt undermined. Yeah, which the t- biggest twist for me at the end is that this guy's married. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if this is how he seems to be, like, well, she can't be better than me. Yeah, I yeah. don't want to say why, but I think we all understand what I'm getting at. Yeah, exactly. Um, I there's also some comments that are posted here, relevant comments. Somebody's gone to a lot of uh, effort to, uh, I don't know, Ar- archive this post. Archive this post. Anyway, somebody said this was a pretty catastrophic blunder for someone who never miss makes mistakes. <laughs> Uh, Then somebody said, got an answer for the next time that question comes up. (laughs) (laughs) Although the question, unfortunately, is like, you know, what's like, uh, what was the biggest mistake and how you handled it? Mm. I don't think usually, you know, if you're prepared for this in an interview, you come up with a mistake that you ended up handling really yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> this like, kind of just be like, this is the mistake I made, and boy, did I not handle it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How'd you handle it? Um, redundancy, really, yeah. in the end. It was- <laughs> I, yeah. I ended up emailing her on uh, or messaging her on LinkedIn, <laughs> telling her that she was wrong, um, which he actually ends up doing, just by the way. Jeez. There was like an update afterwards. It's not worth going into. But he was like, firstly... I took all your comments on board and I thought they were good and I, and I won't email her. But then I kept not getting jobs in the same industry and thought it must be, be her, her fault. <laughs> uh, so then he does email her and then he's like, she was actually really polite, but still she's a, screwed me over. She is a professional. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One of you two is a professional. <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, he is. He says he is. Yeah. He says he's a professional. <laughs> you might have forgotten if, Cambo. If only she wasn't out to get him. Said, I told her I'm a professional and I don't make mistakes. <laughs> You've forgotten that part. I had Cambo. forgotten that part. I'm not a professional. <laughs> I made mistakes. Uh, all right, Cambo. Uh, let's move on into Ask Reddit. Ask Reddit. This Ask Reddit is by Boba Teeth. Thanks. What is the most useless thing you still have memorized? Oh, it, I, it'd, it'd be like movie and TV quotes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what though? And I like I say this with uh, a grain of salt. Sometimes that stuff can be handy. I but I I reckon I maybe if I if I concentrated I could probably still quote the opening scene to the movie from Dusk Till Dawn, <laughs> word yeah. for word. I just don't think that's going to be useful ever. It might come up in trivia one day. Ma- yeah. Hey, um, for two points, quote the entirety of the opening scene of From Dusk Till Dawn. Yeah. <laughs> Play all six characters. Yeah, yeah. Mine is, um, mine is really uh, totally useless now. It's very, it's small, but still, mm. like if I could just get rid of it, it would be fine. Yeah, and that is, and I think you know this uh, figure too, which is that the cinema that we used to work for, we started at, yeah, the biggest auditorium had seven hundred and forty three seats. Yep. Now, what makes this even more redundant is that it's been it's, remodeled. It's, yeah, it doesn't and even have that, that many seats. It's still a twenty eight meter screen, though. Yeah. Do you think it will come up 
in trivia one day where they asked, <laughs> "What was what formerly was <laughs> the most amount of seats? The, the most amount cinema. of seats in the southern hemisphere <laughs> yeah. for a cinema?" And we're like, oh, oh. "We got this." Glad I held on to that one. <laughs> and then what would be really annoying is they're like, "Actually, there were 742 seats." I'm yeah. terribly sorry. And, and you've and just you go, got that "Well, wrong. you know, do you count the spaces for wheelchairs or not?" This is the yeah. real question. Yeah, that's right. Actually, do you know what? I can't even tell you with certainty whether the 743 included the wheelchair spaces. Yeah, I can't remember either. Because technically, in this is this is a fun fact for those listening that haven't worked in the <laughs> cinema industry. They are technically seats in like the system, so you can, you can book them sell for them. people yeah. with wheelchairs, but they're not physical seats in the cinema. Yeah, yeah. So just so. Uh, I don't yeah. know. Also, if you go into a cinema in the light box in the back, there's normally when you open a door, a list of seats yeah. inside that door, and they're called house seats, and they're sold yeah. last or so never. You, they're never or, sold, or, right? or never. Yeah, yeah, only in very rare circumstances. So, mm-hmm. if you were yeah. in need of a better seat, <laughs> and the, the point of those is like if somebody's seat is drenched with coke from the yeah, session yeah. before you, or something, then, one, then yeah. you move some people there that you know yeah, aren't yeah. going to be sold. Um, also. Um, in the light box is, yeah. is usually a torch. You can just take that if you <laughs> if you need a torch. <laughs> also, a couple of switches. They'll turn on the house lights. So if you really want to annoy people, pop if them on. If you've just seen your enemy walk into a <laughs> session of the movie, then uh, yeah, turn it on. Um, anything else you've memorized that won't well, come in handy? Uh, yeah, they not come in handy. No, definitely not. But um. I one one Christmas, Stacey and I had a bit of a drive on our hands. So we put on an old album that we both used to have as teenagers from mm. like 2001. So it's an old, um, like uh, fun little summery pop punk album. And we both realized that we still knew every word to every song on that album, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which is funny because as, as a song comes on, you're like, geez, I haven't heard this in years. And then you yeah. manage to sing every single word. And then you're like, where's that been? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just been hiding, lurking yeah. in the back of my brain for yeah. the one day when it comes on. Uh, yeah, that's true. I'm still going to say uh, not useless can be. Good. Yeah. If in good, trivia they come times. up and they say, good sing every word to the album, all killer, no filler, or we'll shoot you in the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if you at a trivia night if that comes up. Yeah, but <laughs> I think that's a, I that's play, a hostage. I play <laughs> high stakes trivia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's now, cool. for one finger being saved, <laughs> please yeah. answer the following. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that a uh, Mike Myers Saturday Night Live? Oh, yeah. The Japanese game show. The Japanese yeah. game show. Yeah. 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 I wonder anyway, who played the Japanese man in that different. sketch. Yeah, it was uh, it was a, a, a sensitive Japanese. <laughs> uh, much respect to the Japanese people was made in that sketch. Uh, anywho, here's another one, just quickly. It's by Haskell Biscom. Who in Hollywood wrecked themselves with plastic surgery? I know what the answer to this is going to be at the top of the comments because every single time this person comes up in anywhere, everyone says you've had too much plastic surgery. Oh. And that is Aaron Moriarty from The Boys, plays Starlight. Oh, yes. I That's guarantee I you, if you open the post, if not the first, the link, <laughs> if not the first, it'll be the second comment. Yeah. Because people feel the need every single time she she posts anything. But like, fun on set, everyone's like, you ruined your face, Aaron. What have you done? <laughs> people are uh, really angry about Admittedly, it. I have seen comparative photos and I was like, oh, yeah, no. I, oh, look, look. Not I, that I, I'm going to go around and berate her every chance I get, yeah. but just objectively. I yeah, agree. I, think I, I agree, Nelson. So I think good. she's a very beautiful <laughs> woman who didn't need the cosmetic surgery. And yes, I would say perhaps it is for the worse. Yeah. But one, she's still very beautiful. And two, who cares? Like, it's, <laughs> people are so angry about it. But like, she did yeah. it willingly. You know, she didn't have to have facial reconstruction surgery or anything. Like, yeah. she, that was her choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I feel like that's almost why we are allowed as a public to say something. If it was facial reconstruction surgery and she didn't have a choice, it's like, hey, hey, shut up about it. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But when, you know, somebody's made that decision, you're like, well, hey, you've got to stick to it. Mm. Anyway, Um, I I guarantee it should should be number one. Um, This is uh, an example I... 
I actually brought up just the other day in a recording for Council Movies, mm-hmm. um, which is Mickey Rourke. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. you've seen young Mickey Rourke, but I think he's I have. so handsome. Yeah, like it's it's crazy. He's really good looking. Yeah, and then current day Oof. Mickey Rourke oh, looks yeah. like a melted candle. Yes, and yeah. look, there there are two schools of thought. Yeah. Some people will say, because Mickey Rock did step away from acting for a while and became a boxer. And people yeah. have said he actually has had constructive surgeries because he had quite a few like broken noses and things like that. Yeah. And other people point out he started getting plastic surgery before he became a boxer. So he may have inevitably always had been going down this route. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, look, I'm sure the boxing didn't help. Yeah. Yeah, exa- yeah, it probably didn't help. That's true. Um, I think of, obviously, I feel like one that we occasionally forget uh, is Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I feel like that it's funny because he almost like transcended the idea of bad plastic surgery where people just were like, no, that's his. That's what he's... he looks like now. <laughs> and because like he's, <laughs> it's crazy because he's, uh, just a different person. <laughs> like, yeah. if you show me the two Mickey Rourke's next to each other, I can be like, oh, my God, what have they done? You know, yeah. like, look at this difference. If you show me young Michael Jackson and Michael Jackson before he died, I'd be like, uh, who are these two? Yeah, yeah. You've, you've, <laughs> you've accidentally got two different people here. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, how about somebody that you think maybe uh, it hasn't been uh, – Bad, let's say. Um, oh, are you talking about positive plastic surgery? Yeah, well, I tell let's you, say, I tell let's you, say like obvious, like noticeably mm-hmm. had it. Yep, I, I but have one, not terrible. Yeah. This is a person I think, and this is so so vain, but I think this is true. Whose career I think was actually made by plastic surgery is uh, yeah. Blake Lively. Oh, there is a distinct difference in Blake Lively pre nose job and post nose job. Yeah, and I just I I have a feeling that people are so vain that if she had have had her original nose, she probably just wouldn't have been as big, which is yeah. crazy to think, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. But I honestly think that nose job probably landed her a role in Gossip Girl as like the perfect blonde girl kind of thing. Yeah, right. And yeah. like made her career. Yeah, that's really interesting. Which is fine. I think she's I I personally think she's cuter with the bigger nose, but I understand that the small petite nose is like the That's the, the sad stage. like part about it, isn't it? It's like it's not that these people look unattractive, but they probably feel as though if they need to be like the uh um what do you call it? Like pinnacle of good looking celebrity, they need to have these certain traits. Yeah. And then that's what makes them change the things that, that are totally fine about them to uh Yeah, that like that, that that's we talked about Erin Moriarty, but um it, it seems as if if she's had what's called uh buck bechtel fat removal, which is your cheeks. Yeah. And it, it you you end up looking quite skinny in the face. And before that she did have like a little bit of um this is a weird thing to say, but like a little like a roundness to her cheek. Yeah. Which I thought was really distinctive and nice. Yeah. Like I yeah. think that was a good characteristic of her face. Yeah. Is that like there was this kind of cute roundness to it. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. But like oh yeah, I I completely understand this this need that if you're an actor making a living by your appearance, you feel the need to be whatever the pinnacle of that appearance is. Yeah. Hmm. Bit of a bummer. It is hey, a I've- bit of a bummer. I've just accidentally been uh, binging while we've been talking. Mm -hmm. And one that came up, and I think it's like some people are like not sure about it, but also it seems like definitely is Sylvester Stallone. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, If he's had plastic surgery. I I don't know. Because he he looks like old. And yeah, stuff, but then also you're like, but maybe you should have been. I maybe don't, your skin is too tight. I don't know. See, this is the I guess the the distinctive difference. I don't know whether he's had plastic surgeries, but I'm sure he's had procedures like Botox or. Oh uh, yeah, or, true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just the yeah, and like yeah. and like his hair is still black. 
Yeah. Which, obviously not. <laughs> yeah. no, obviously. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at some silver fucks. For okay, it, so yeah. He started yeah. to embrace he's, it more. He's, he's gone yeah. back. Yeah. He's yeah. like, okay. right, I, I can't hide it anymore. Yeah, I'm 71. I can't pretend that this is do you, it. Do you know what's crazy, Camby? Is my mum, she's in her 70s, not one grey. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It yeah, what's great. her secret? Yeah. Uh, it's just a good eating. <laughs> uh, anywho, uh, let's move on into Today I Advice. So now it's time for Today I Learned. Today I Learned. And also sometimes advice. This Today I Learned is by Gone Fish Caking. But it was originally, no, it was a cross post addressed by Gone Fish Caking, but it was originally by Media Gone Vintage. Today I learned that one of the strategies proposed for raising the Titanic before it fully deteriorates was to fill it full of ping pong balls. Yeah. It, it's um, funny because it sounds so dumb, but like there was some there was some grounded logic to it, you know, like Yeah, I, I think there I mean I mean I mean ultimately they I think they realized that it, it wouldn't have worked but it it it's not a like that is just a material that would work for their purposes. And yeah. when they say ping pong balls I'm sure they would like it's like oh well it, it's like a ping pong ball it'd be made of this material filled with you know. Yeah, whereas, yeah. And then people have taken it to be like they wanted to send ping pong balls like down. Like literal ping pong balls. Yeah. yeah. No, I think the thing that they uh ended up debunking this in the end as a possibility was that they were like, well, the pressure mm. of the ocean would crush the pink ball balls. And again, even perhaps if they were made of some special material, still mm. to be that small in that shape would just nothing would yeah. uh, survive the pressure before it was able to levitate. My uh, understanding is ship. that you just can't raise it anymore, right? Like it's been down there for too long. It's too brittle. Like any attempt, it will just fall apart. Yeah, yeah. They were actually saying initial, initially the uh, speculation about the Titanic was that it would be in pristine condition because it was so mm. far down that, mm. like, no bacteria would survive and stuff like that. And then they, they saw it. found it and they were like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> wrong. Yeah, we were yeah. wrong. Uh, and funnily enough, I found in the comments just a random fact that was like, uh, somebody's like, oh, yeah, you know, bacteria does erode it and whatever. And there's like uh, yeah. uh, creatures that have like eroded the ship. And somebody said, are they creatures that like eat metal? To which I thought was stupid because I thought somebody just went, I don't know, they're eating like things on the top and maybe acidic yeah. things happen to the boat Flakes inco- inconsequentially come off, yeah. or something, you know. But they were like, then they wrote, no, no, there's actually been a like fish or something named after the fact that it eats the metal from the Titanic. It's like, oh, that's pretty wow. nuts. That just, that just happens. Um, but... Here's what I'm proposing, Kimbe. What if we got it out? Mm, okay. <laughs> Imagine if one day we yeah. just rock up to like I don't know what the nearest harbor is. We, you know what? We'll bring it to New York. Yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. that's where it was headed, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll just turn we'll up in it. New York Harbor and be like, "All right, we got it here." <laughs> yeah. Now what? And then. I mean, we'd be rich men, Camper. I think we'd mm. get a lot. What would be interesting is they're like, oh, my God, how'd you do it? And we'd be like, ropes. <laughs> <laughs> no one's tried ropes. No one's tried ropes. What we did is we dropped in a rope with a, like a hook on it and just kind of fished around for a bit until something <laughs> latched. Yeah, and then we didn't even go down there. And then we just, well, we, we don't have the equipment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just put ropes over the edge of our boat. Yeah. We hooked it on and then just took off. We let the boat drag. We've actually been dragging it here. Yeah. The, the annoying thing is, and I don't think anyone knew this, we hooked it up, we brought it up, there's only half of it. We had to do it, we had to do it again. Yeah. Apparently this thing split in half. That's annoying. So annoying. Uh, but anyway, it's here. It's done. Give us the millions of yeah, dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the white star line? We will take our payment now. Thank you very much. Um, do you know what the trick is? often with these uh, unsolvable problems. What's that? Is to, uh, so one or two things I think is, one is get volume 
a lot of people working on the problem at one time. Sometimes yeah. that's all you need yeah. to, um, to help. Maybe kind of like a monkey arm linking chain is the way to do it rather than rope. Send one person oh, people. under another. <laughs> but yeah, obviously you have to start with the person that can hold their breath the longest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we're talking everybody in the world, Canberra. Somebody yeah. can make it. Yeah, yeah. And the strongest people down the bottom because the pressure is pretty intense. Oh, yeah. That's, you have to be able to hold your breath for a long time and be the strongest yeah. person in the universe. Um, but the other thing is to um, get somebody with – uh, that feels as though their pride might be compromised if they couldn't get it done. And one person comes to mind immediately, which is Elon Musk. Mm. I think if we really wanted to get the Titanic back, all we need to do is be like, hey, Elon, bet you couldn't. <laughs> and then it'd be up in no time. Or no, the, the other, the risk there with someone like Elon Musk is they all, like he prides himself on being a troll. Mm. So he'll probably just go down there and like blow it up. Yeah. Like, ah, I blow the Titanic. What are you going to do? Yeah. And then it floats to the surface and we're like, oh shit, that like kind of worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, annoying. Yeah. I, just... <laughs> I, what if you just found a random person and you're like, we will release your internet browsing history unless you raise the Titanic. Oh. <laughs> they're like, oh shit. <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, okay. You've got That's one true. year. Yeah. <laughs> we just do that to enough people. Yeah, to enough once. people, yeah. Yeah, because uh, like someone will be out on a, a boat in the middle of the ocean and then another boat will come up and they'll be like, "Are you what what are you, what are you doing here?" Yeah. I can't explain, but I need to raise the Titanic. <laughs> Me too. All right. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, work, we together. work together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. I think that's the plan. Do we need it? Actually, I've just no, decided. I'm against I don't it. Think Why we do need. we need it? Just build it down there. If you really want it, build another one. It seems it, like, it would be cheaper to build another one. It seems like uh, the only thing perhaps a waste of materials. Get that metal mm. back. We can oh, use yeah, that yeah, get the metal. Recycle. Recycle. Yeah, recycle the metal. That's why we need it back. It's because... <laughs> It's difficult, you know, yeah. mining. It's iron wasteful. And stuff. It's, it's wasteful to dump in the sea. Yeah. Exactly. So we shouldn't be doing it. Uh, all right, Kevin, let's move into shower thoughts. Shower thoughts, 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 shower thoughts, 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 shower thoughts, 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 shower thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Okay, maybe we're going to do one or two here, maybe. Okay. Because uh, I want to get into my pod napping. Uh, this first shower thought is by Buddy462. Having one eyebrow usually means having more hair than if you had two. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is so... I like this one because to me this is a shower thought. Yeah, this yeah. Is yeah. Like a shower thought. <laughs> this is a, like a, an absolute like yeah. definitive shower thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, here's another one. This is by Very Nice Zombie. It's clear time travel would never happen because if it did, every concert today would be completely packed. I know I've said this on the podcast before, Canberra, yeah. in different contexts, but I think if time travel actually happened, right, aside from there would be like legislation and law about going mm. back in time. Yeah. But the... We think that we are living in the best period of time mm. so that people would want to come back. But can you imagine if time travel exists now, right? And there's like cavemen back in the day that were like, oh, do you see me take down that deer? Oh, people will be coming back to see that. Check that out if they could time travel. But it's like, no, that's the whole point. People in a bit, like 500 million years from now aren't going to look back on today yeah. and be like, that'd be a great time to revisit. It, like, it, no, they don't know all the words it, to uh, Smash Mouth. <laughs> it reminds me of, there's a joke in the TV show Peep Show where mm -hmm. they talk about time travel and Jazz says, Oh, I'd go back to the 60s. Could you imagine get a Coke in a glass bottle and watch the Rolling Stones? And Mark <laughs> is like, you can do that now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny. Um, 
Yeah. Anyway, I feel like people that think about time travel think yeah. of it in the immediate future. I'm just saying we are theoretically to people 500 million billion years in Not the future. Not that interesting. So boring. Yeah. There would be no reason why they'd want to come back. It's like you going back to the 20s and realizing that you couldn't have your phone. Yeah, but exactly. like times a million fold. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, people can't even teleport around yeah, back in 2024. Yeah, the walk everywhere. The last one there was like 83. Yeah, why, yeah. Why would I go there? It sounds yeah. horrible. Yeah, as opposed to our 428. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, Kemet, let's move on into butt napping. Oh, oh my God, I'm being butt napped. Podnapping. This is Podnapping, where we nap a pod. We take a topic of conversation or a segment from another thing, and we do it ourselves. Uh, this week is my week, because I'm doing two in a row. Cool. As I promised. Yes. As penance for someone else. I can't remember what. Um, okay, so you've actually done this one to me before, but uh, I, I happened to come across it again on the YouTube, mm. and uh, I thought I'd, I'd get a few questions and do it to you. We're playing the game, um, actually, where yes. I'm going to tell you a statement. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, I've tried to get ones that are sort of in your realm, uh, so movie-related, kind of geeky yeah. stuff related. Bodybuilding, yeah. uh, sports. Yeah, boobs. Um, <laughs> Boots, uh, fixing cars up. Yeah, yeah. All that leather stuff. jackets, you know, all the stuff I'm known for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yes, I'm actually a pretty, pretty fun show. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so anyway, I, I need to the find the factional I, error. Yeah, I say a statement, something's technically wrong. You have to answer with, um, actually, if you yeah. don't, you um, are a loser just for your whole life. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't want that on me. I don't want that upon my, yeah. upon my person. Okay, first one. In Joss Whedon's Firefly, Uh smuggler Captain Malcolm Reynolds pilots the ship Firefly to avoid Uh the all-powerful Alliance. Um, actually, uh, it's called Serenity, the ship. Firefly is the class of ship that they fly. Bingo, bango, can be, got it. That was an easy one. I knew you'd get that one. That was an easy one. Okay, in Star Wars, the band Figrin Dan and the modal nodes plays a genre of music known as jizz, which we first hear them play on Jabba's Barge. Um, actually, we first hear them in the Moss Eisley Cantina. Correct, can the, In the first, the released Star Wars. Good job. Not the Good first job. one, obviously, because that's technically Rogue One at this point, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's very confusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, let's not get into the timeline of Star Wars. Okay. In Return of the Jedi. Sorry, do we just want to, it's called jizz. What did I say? Didn't I say jizz? No, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, yeah. That yeah. was how lazy they yeah. were. So, yeah, yeah. Because to be clear, it's jazz. It's jazz. They're playing. But they're like, they're like obviously, we can't call no, it. No, it's then, spacey. And they called it jizz and no one went, um. <laughs> well, that's yeah. because at the time, do you remember, okay, so we have, this is a very, this is a side story. We have a friend called Jasmine who gets mm-hmm. shortened to jazz. Yeah. And she said to her mom, mom, why did you call me? Jasmine slash jazz, because now all the kids tease me and call me jizz. She mm-hmm. said this jokingly. She wasn't actually that upset. And her mom was like, jizz just wasn't a thing. Yeah. When, yeah, I, when you were born. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I imagine it was the same thing in, in you know, when Star Wars was created. It's like, yeah. jizz just wasn't a thing. Uh, it's like your brother Brumshot. We couldn't have known that that would become <laughs> a search term in porn. What were the chats? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, in. Return of the Jedi, the mm-hmm. rebels attack and destroy the new Darth Star's, uh, sorry, the new Darth Star's, the new Death Star's shield generator on the planet Endor with the help of fairy creatures called Ewoks. Um, actually two things. Oh! I'm going to say that they're saying it's a moon and not a planet. Correct. Um, but, uh, so can you read it again? I want to know what the, what the second one was I picked up on there. Uh, in Return of the Jedi, the rebels oh, attack. I remember. Just, okay. In the movie Return of the Jedi, they're never called Ewoks. 
And the only reason people know them as Ewoks is because that's yeah. what the merchandising was called. That's true, but you would still say that they're called Ewoks. I would even <laughs> if they <laughs> were not mentioned in the so movie. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, I will. I will accept the extra point. Thank you very much. <laughs> did Did they not even credit them at like in the credits? They credit like the the. Character, they've got character now. Yeah, right. Wicket is the main one that you see in the movies. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anywho, uh, Captain America's shield is so strong because it is made of adamantium, the same metal in Wolverine's skeleton. Well, this is a this is a tough one because I'm actually it's vibranium in the movies, but mm. in the comic books it is adamantium. Hmm. Well, uh, so can you read it one last time? Unless I missed something. Okay, Captain America's shield is so strong because it is made of adamantium, the same metal in Wolverine's skeleton. Yeah. Uh, This says, "I'm actually Captain America's shield is made of an alloy of vibranium and an unknown iron alloy, sometimes called proto adamantium." So So it's made of both. Well, yeah, which I actually think is a comic book thing. I don't yeah. think they're referencing yeah. the movies I know in, here. In, yeah. in, in the movies, I know they changed it to Vibranium specifically because they didn't have the rights to the X-Men. Oh, when that right. when that was coming yeah, out, okay. Fox owned the X-Men. They now own the X-Men again. And yeah. I'm sure they'll do some retcon be like, oh, we actually found some oh. adamantium in here too. What do you know? It turns out it was the thing just like, Wolverine's skeleton all the time. <laughs> just like Scarlet Witch is technically a mutant, but in all the first movies they're like, we don't know what she is. She's just a miracle of science or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, in J.I.R. Tolkien's The Fellowship of the Ring, <laughs> the titular fellowship is composed of nine members with representatives from four races, Hobbit, Dwarf, elf, and man. Um, actually, isn't there a wizard in there? Is he part of the fellowship? Let me. So, dwarf, man, elf, hobbit. Yeah, and and Gandalf should be a wizard. Uh I will give that to you, Cambo. Um, actually, Gandalf is a member of the Istari race, not the race of man. Yes. So, yes, that's yeah. included. Is Starry Race Cambo is what you should have known <laughs> and said. <laughs> okay. Uh, in Star Wars, in order to free young Anakin Skywalker from slavery, Qui Gon Jinn must first. Uh, sorry, Qui Gon Jinn first uses a Jedi mind trick to convince his master Watto, a Toydarian junk merchant, to allow him to pod race. Um. Actually. And I quote, these Jedi mind tricks don't work on me. <laughs> That's good. That's Thank good, Cameron. Uh, don't they use the force to change the dice roll? Yeah, or yeah, he cheats. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> also, at that point, just steal it. Like, go into your lightsaber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> turn it zoom, on and be like, zoom, give, zoom, me, zoom, give me the yeah. bit I need. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, Dungeons and Dragons has a lot of monsters that have been drawn from European folk- folklore, such as the kobold, goblin, orc, and troll, but also has several monsters unique to D&D, such as the Tarasque or the fearsome Grell. <laughs> oh, okay. This is a pretty nerdy <clears throat> one and tricky, yeah. but you could maybe... If you are really savvy, it, it, I reckon you could work this one out. Is it not the you said European folklore? Yeah. Is it not European folklore that those creatures are from? No. Okay. I don't know then. You're gonna have to tell me the I'm actually here. Um actually, orcs were invented by J.R.R. Tolkien for Middle Earth. Oh yes, of course. Say so, yeah. Like maybe technically if you know that they exist in that world and mm-hmm. he actually anyway. But he's uh, from Europe. He is from no, uh yeah, but a European folklore it says. Yeah, but I, I would say he's European, he made a folklore creature. It's oh, European folklore. Okay. Oh. Um actually um, actually <laughs> that was factually correct. <laughs> actually there is another one in here, funnily enough. There's a fan correction in this one. 
where they actually say, I kind of forgot exactly what it was, but the Tarask is not unique to D&D and in fact did come from some other like bizarre oh. like folklore thing of another country. So anyway, uh, okay, last one. In the original Crash Bandicoot, Crash can gain a new life by breaking a one-up box or by collecting 100 mangoes. Um, actually, they're not called one-up boxes, aren't they? Aren't they? Isn't that from Mario? No. But also, I thought they were apples that he collected. Incorrect on both fronts, really? Cambe. Are they not apples that he collects? Not apples. I've always thought they were apples. But they're not mangoes. Oh. Are they... You they're might have red. heard this <laughs> yeah, before. <laughs> I, it's a made-up, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's, it's a made-up made fruit. fruit I think. Right. And you might have heard it before. But it's, um, actually, he collects Wumpa fruit. Oh, okay. No, I don't I've know. Ne- now I've I, never heard that. Now before. I need to know if Wumpa fruit is. This is one of these embarrassing things to Bing when you're like, if somebody was to look at your search history yeah. and they're like, do, were you actually checking if Wumpa fruit is a this real is thing? This is why. No, so I was like, but to... I needed to. Nelson, this is why you have to raise the Titanic or the world will know you had to Google this. Yeah. Oh, my God. I think Wumpa fruits are a thing. I just assumed it was a made up. It looks like they look like persimmons, actually. Oh. Wumpa fruit, persimmon. Um, that has not helped. Anyway, I think they are a thing. Who knew? All right. Anyway, let's uh, move on and get into the Ask Me Anything. Where listeners of the show, just like you, listener, can write in and ask us anything you want. You got the questions. We have the answers. So ask us, ask us anything at all. I forgot that we had that. Now, <laughs> me too. We didn't play it last week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's good. I I will remember that for future. No, you won't. You start. You still can't do the outro. Kemba, I haven't <laughs> promised that about the outro, but I'm now promising that I okay. won't forget the AMA intro. But maybe sometimes I will so I will imply that we should do the AMA intro after I've introed it. Just something like that. Anywho. Okay. Well, look, I'll, I'll hold you to it. Uh, are you going to do this or what? Uh, yeah, we're going to hear from Zimbo. Uh, so, uh, as everyone says, gentlemen, you can decide which of you this applies to. I saw the episode of Stuff You Should Know podcast. First of all, listening to other podcasts is not recommended. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, except whoa, from, whoa. Except <laughs> from my other podcast, which again releases on Thursday. Um, and immediately you made me suspect they were kidnapping your show, RE Milk Pranks. I and then hate to point this out to some of our loyal listeners. Mm hmm. I don't think milk pranks was was milk pranks our idea. I I thought it might have come from a post. Yeah, I thought it came from a post as well. Expanded on. Yeah, yeah, milk yeah. Pranks. <laughs> I um, know. no, I think it was our idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm just thinking about it now. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. We are the we are the, we are the grandfathers of milk pranks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and then it looks like there's some kind of attachment here. That oh, yeah, that's probably the episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, there's an episode called Milk Wars. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then continues, podnapping music suggestion for AI. Prompt that uh, Zimbo has used for ChatGPT is please write lyrics for a short song about two Australians named Nelson and Cambo who host a podcast called Reddit on Reddit. Uh, the podcast discusses interesting posts and topics in the past week on Reddit. I curated some of the lyrics I thought would make it uh, make a strong, uh, good song, uh, and I want it in the style of Louis Armstrong. Yeah. So, for just quick context, for those who don't know, we asked, uh, we we were using this AI uh, music generator program mm-hmm. uh, to make Cambo used it uh, for his dynamic segment to make some fun songs about us, and we asked some of the listeners to write in their own lyrics and a style that they would like the AI to do it in. Yep, and so this is all Simba's one. Yes. Now, would you would you like me to play it in its entirety? Now it's about a minute twenty, or do you want to play it at the end? 
Oh, it's like do you like our outro. It's instead? like an outro. Oh. What, what do you think would work better? Yeah, let's do. Let's do it as an outro. That's okay. a good idea. Anyway, I have made this for Zimbo. Okay, I've made the, the lyrics he has sent through in the style of Louis Armstrong, uh, and we'll play it at the end. Uh, anyway, it says, "Hope that works." Much love, Zimbo and Ammo. And also, there was actually another one from Zimbo that came in just before this, mm-hmm. and he asked if we had, uh, in regard to weddings, do we have any registries, mm-hmm. or if not, charities. We'd like donate too. So we're both getting married soonish. Yeah. We actually, I would say, I haven't been to a wedding in a really long time that's had a registry. I wonder if they're less of a thing here. Yeah. I know I, they exist. I thought it was a generation thing. But, yeah, oh, yeah, but you now right, that Azimbo's asking, I thought, oh, maybe it's not. And maybe it is a um, more of a, because we the thing that is very common here is what's called a wishing well. Yes. Which is the polite way to say, give us some cash. Give us some money, yeah. Um, and so people like put, you know, get a card and put money in card yeah. and then stick it. And there's like a, a little box people usually have um, to, to collect these at the wedding. Um, and I think kind of the, the reason why I thought it was a, a generational and the a thing that people are doing more now is because people are living together earlier mm-hmm. and have all the supplies for their um, – house and and don't need the kind of registry stuff um which is a long way of saying neither of us have registries neither of us have registries i'm actually ellen and i are talking about whether we even want to ask for a wishing well thing at our wedding because we're having it interstate different states a lot of our family is uh, coming over and I feel bad that everybody's going to have to spend so much money on flights and then accommodation at our wedding that I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to ask for like any more I, money. I think, <laughs> I think we all as a generation at least agree that you pay for yourself at a wedding. That's, and e- yeah. look, even, even with travel included. I don't know. See, I don't want people I to would, do that. <laughs> I'm like, that's, I, I would you've still already paid more. feel I want to pay for myself for the wedding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, can't. Sorry. You have to pay heaps. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you specifically. But... Make it up for the people that did their <laughs> doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I just mean my other guests, obviously. <laughs> um, is there a, a charity? I don't mind the charity mm. thing, actually, idea. I don't really have one in mind, though. Yeah. Do you no, like I any don't have good, one of good charities? I don't have one off the top of my head. Um, you know what? I would just say, I'm assuming they take, uh, or they definitely do, <laughs> uh, the Royal Children's Hospital in mm-hmm. um, in Melbourne mm-hmm. is uh, one that I think is really good. It's also yeah. Royal Children's and Royal Melbourne, so kind of part of the same yeah. thing. Yeah. And I've always and... been a fan of the guide dogs. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Royal Children's Foundation is one that I really like. I just feel like, you know, there's some sad stories about kids that like, they're like five and they've got yeah. leukemia and you're yeah. like, that sucks. Anywho, uh, on that positive note, <laughs> uh, that's the end of the episode. Uh, thank you for adding in Zimbo. If you would like to write into us, you can do so. Read a podcast, R-E-A-D-I-T podcast at gmail.com. You can also reach us at our Discord, the show the the link is in the show notes yep and our subreddit yep r-e-a-d-i-d podcast um rate review the show send us some love five stars all that yeah yeah, yeah, report releases on thursday new season coming up first episode is about the ghostbusters so that'll be what but can Matt nelson will be listening we know that i i've I've already listened that's how much of a fan i am (laughs) illegally I legally downloaded it just so you wouldn't get, wouldn't <laughs> yeah, get the download. Extra download. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thanks for listening and we will read you later. Down under in the land of Oz, Nelson and Cambodia hide. With life in hand, they dive each week to Reddit's great design. Read it on Reddit, Nelson and Campbell lead the way. Sharing stories, laughs, and more from posts of every day. I Melvin streets to Sydney shores. They connect with fans, open doors. With each new post, 
They find the gold, their podcast never grows old. Read it on Reddit, Nelson and Campbell oh, lead the way. Sharing stories, laughs, and more from post of every day. Don't miss a beat with Nelson and Cambo. Take your seat, read it on Reddit. The show's begun with every episode. Join the fun.